and excited. And I couldn't understand why am I so excited. Uh, and I'm still excited. And I don't know why. Has anybody ever been that way? You're so excited. You just don't know why. It's like I've got this earnest expectation that something is about to happen. That something is about to shift. I don't know what it is, but I had all week long, I've had this excitement, this overwhelming joy, this like, can't nothing get me down today type of just excitement, just I should be upset, but I've just got to smile because something is on its way. It, it, it's, it's a year of audacious fruit, which means if you have some audacious thoughts, it will produce some audacious actions. And those audacious actions will produce, get this, some audacious fruit phone calls are going to be happening this week. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I posted that. Didn't I post that earlier in the... I just said not to turn around. But didn't I post that earlier in the week about phone calls? And I got a phone call yesterday. Wasn't even expecting a phone call yesterday uh, about something. It's just, just, just phone calls. just going to keep coming. Just unexpected phone call. Somebody that was hating on you is going to call and apologize this week. Come on. We, I missed it. I missed, I missed it on that one. My bad. You were right. Your boss is going to call you this week and say, you know what? You deserve that promotion. Your professor is going to call you and say, you know what? I apologize for giving you that bad mark. I should have... I can, I'm going to give you one extra point just because I just, I'm saying just receive, have an expectation this week. Just have an a expectation that something's going to shift on your behalf. Like have an expectation that yeses and amens are yours, that the promises of God, have an expectation. Does anybody have an expectation and don't expect nothing bad this week. Don't expect uh, 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 something not good to happen. Expect good things. The Bible says, oh, good. God's almighty. God, Lord. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If I'm alive, goodness and uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to call you now. I'm going to call you now and just go preach it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not okay. That word shall is an old school word. It in in the new in the new school it says will. And then in the new new school it says it better happen. Surely goodness and mercy you better fall me. You bet you give. Man, you be, sometimes you need to turn back around. You're too far back. Get closer. <laughs> Surely, goodness and mercy. Goodness. Can I tell you something? The word great is not found in the Hebrew Bible. It's not in their language. Good is the best you can have. There's nothing better than good. So when he says goodness, there is nothing better it's that's the you've maxed out it's like a hundred percent on a score on a, on a grade on a, on a test that's the best you can get hundred percent right goodness and mer even if i mess up mercy will follow me all i gotta do is serve him come on serve him i want more goodness and more mercy that's why we're going to be talking about more next week. Say it, more. How do you feel when you say more? Just th think about, look at your lips. If you could look at your lips, take out your Samsung or your iPhone. You know the iPhone is blessed. The Samsung, mm. 
But take it out and look at yourself while you're saying more. More. It's just, it just, your, even your lips saying. You always trying to just say more. It just, more. More. I mean, as I say more, my stomach gets empty like I'm hungry. More. I'm eating ribs. I'm like, more. I'm drinking some juice. More. I look at my bank account, more. I look at my car, more. I look at my kids, more wisdom. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be careful. You gotta, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. More wisdom, make sure that comes in. Wisdom cuts out that more a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Wisdom is like more. We want more. We're expecting more in the fight. I want more to come through so that I can overcome. More, 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 more. See, y'all have no idea. You, I has not seen no ear. You ain't even seen my notes yet for more. I'm going to give you a secret because I know y'all nosy people. That's why y'all are on social media because you and some of y'all on social media, you don't, you don't ever like nothing, but you've seen everything everybody else is doing. Don't ever comment. You can't, can't stand the people always say, oh, yeah, I've been seeing what you're doing. Well, could you say good job on there or something? Uh... The, the, the first message we're going to talk about next week is called the audacity of bigger. Y'all have no, y'all don't even worry. Just try to, just spend the rest of the week trying to figure out the audacity of bigger. The, the, the audacity, turn to your neighbor and say the audacity of bigger. Whew, that's a powerful thing right there. The, aud the audacity of bigger. The audacity of bigger. Doesn't that make you upset when you say audacity? You have the audacity. It's an audacity of bigger. Hey Amen. High five your neighbor. Take your seat. We're going to get in this word real quick. We're going to get in this word real quick. Thanks, worship team. More. More. Expanding our capacity for more, more, more. Oh, more, more. Thanks so much. More, more. Hey, we finished a series last week called Step Up. Uh, that series was to simply challenge us to step up in our giving, step up in our serving, step up in our commitment. Uh, if you look behind you, there's tons of empty seats in the back. Look behind you. There are tons of empty seats back there uh, waiting for more people to sit in those seats. Let's fill this sanctuary next week. Amen. Let's fill this sanctuary next week. I want to give you a guarantee. I guarantee you, if you come to every week of the series more and you apply the principles that you learn in the series, I guarantee you, you will see some increases in your life. Notice I didn't say if you show up, increase is going to happen. I said if you show up and apply the principles that you've learned, I guarantee you will see some increase in your life. Today I just want to have a message to simply challenge you in doing more, challenging you in inviting that one person uh, uh, to church next week and the following week and the following week. Can we all just be a committee of one and, and, and invite one person, say one person, can we all invite one person next week? And not only invite that one person, but bring that one person. There's a difference between inviting and bringing. Inviting means, hey, can you come to church? Bringing means I'm showing up to your door. Hey, wake up. Okay? And bring them, bring them to church. Um, has anybody ever had that one meal that just kind of changed your life? You ever had that one meal that you ate, you ate it, and I mean, before you could even finish, you were just talking about it? You ever had that one meal when the plate showed up, you took a picture of it, just so you could show everybody what you're eating? 
And, and then the people who saw the meal were like, ooh, girl, where is that from? Ooh, man, where'd you, where are you eating that? Like, wh where's my invite, right? And when you ate that one meal, uh, did you ever, like, scarf that one meal down and it just, like, disappeared and you wanted more? Am I the only one that's gotten had that one meal, that one, that one meal that just was like, ooh. I mean, b before you can even finish, you were texting people, you have got to come to this restaurant because this, this meal right here is amazing. That one, one, one meal. Has anybody ever had that one vacation? That one vacation that you were like, this vacation can never end. You ever had that one vacation where you were like, can, can it keep going? This one vacation where you, <laughs> has anybody ever been, had that one vacation where you got into the, to the ocean and you didn't want to leave the ocean? You, you ever had that one vacation where you had your toes in the sand and you were doing this and you took a picture? I remember the first time, and well, the first and the only time yet that I've been to Paris, France. And we were in Paris and, I mean, we were having desserts and, 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 and madeleines and, and, and uh, um, brioche bread and, and croissants and... <laughs> What else? Uh, baguettes. And I mean, the food was just in 7-Up Virgin Mojitos. And just, just it was, and, and, and before the trip was over, I was like, I got to come back here. I'm already working. When can I come back to Paris? Because I got to come back here. And I got to come back without the kids. <laughs> no, seriously. Because we had the kids. Why am I still texting while I'm doing that? Like, what does that mean? But we had the kids with us, and, and, and we had one night where it was just me and Lady T. We went out on the town, and we had the kids to stay back, and then we got a nanny hired, a, a French nanny. And that French nanny cost a lot of money. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, it was a great night. It was a very expensive night. And if we didn't have them kids, we could have had more money to do other things and I'm not going to go there, but I've had that one vacation that I already was ready to book the vacation again before the vacation was over. It's the amazing thing, the powerful, of one, the power, powerful thing about one experience. There's power in just that one experience, that one time, that one thing that you've done, that one experience that you've had, and you want to have it over and over and over again. It's just the one time. Some, some uh, scientists call it a euphoric experience. And, and, and typically when you have a euphoric experience, you, you, you want to go back and do it again and you want to experience the same way as the first time, but it's only that one time when you really experience before. And so we want to talk about this concept of of one because we're starting this series next week called more and this is maybe our one shot our one opportunity to bring that one unsaved friend that that one unchurched friend so they can experience God like never before this is maybe our, our one shot to bring them to experience Corey our one shot to maybe help them to say hey look you can expand your capacity you can do more you can accomplish more God has more for you and they may be saying that it's some tough economic times, but I'm choosing not to participate. They may say that it's a recession, but for me, there is no recession. Why? Because the God I serve is the God of more than enough. This is one opportunity for us to tell people, hey, do not lose hope. Hey, guess what? I know you let your dreams die. I know you let your dreams fall apart, but guess what? God can bring them back to life again. Don't lose hope. God is still in the blessing business. God is still in control. The concept of one. Go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. This message is going to be a great message. And the church says, I've got about 16 pages to read to you. It's going to take me about two and a half hours. It's amazing how powerful one experience can be. One experience. Luke chapter 5, when you have it, say, I have it. Okay, verse 27. It says, after these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi. Who's he? Jesus. 
So Jesus is the he in the context of the scripture, right? So after these things, he or Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast, some translations say a dinner party or a great party, in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others, or sinners, who sat down with them. And their scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, or Jesus snapped back, or Jesus clapped back, or Jesus responded with a little swag and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to." It's an amazing thing. Jesus is saying, uh, it makes no sense for you to be a doctor. It makes no sense for you to be a physician and for you to advertise saying, I only see well people. If you're a doctor or a physician and your, your, your statement is, I only see well people, you have no practice. In order to be a doctor and to have a practice, you need sick people. If no one's sick, then there's no need for you to be a doctor. It's like saying, I'm a lawyer, I'm an attorney, but I'm not practicing law because I don't want to help anybody with law. It's like saying, I'm a professor, but I don't teach. It makes no sense to say, I'm a doctor and I have no patience. I only see well people. Jesus is saying, the, the, the purpose of my life is to reach out to the sick people. Why? Because the sick people are telling me that they need a doctor or a physician. And so as we're looking at this story, we're going to see about four concepts through this story. And they're not all in the same order, but there's some amazing concepts we're going to see in this story. Is that Jesus is not concerned with hanging out with the Christian folk. Jesus is concerned with hanging out with those who don't know Christ. And it's an interesting thing that as he's walking, he's observing, he sees a man in a tax office, talks to the man, says, follow me, and something must have happened because that man decided to give up everything and follow Christ. And not only that, but he was willing to reach out, call all his friends, come on, all his buddies, and say, hey guys, I'm, I'm throwing a party, you're invited. It's, it's an interesting thing to know that Jesus was willing to talk to someone that no one else was willing to talk to. Because as you study Hebrew culture, you find out that a tax collector wouldn't even be taught the principles of Judaism. They had no right to, to, to learn about Judaism. They weren't taught the scriptures. They weren't taught about the prophets. Why? Because you're a tax collector. Your very profession canceled you from learning anything about God. That's a crazy thing to know, that your profession, the thing that you chose to do, knocked you out of being able to come to church. Knocked you out of being able to serve God. And as I'm reading the verses and I'm reading the passage, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, wait a minute. The scribes and the Pharisees are having a problem with Jesus hanging out with all of these sinners. But my question is, how are you so close to be able to see it? It's always the religious ones that got something to say because they're usually at the door wishing they could be in there. Or they're inside and they're masking themselves Oh, come on, y'all. Don't let me, don't. Help me preach this thing today. Let me help preach. But Jesus had one conversation, one connection, and changed someone's life forever. Here we go. Number one. 
One connection. One connection. If you want to reach others, you've got to become intentional about your connections. Jesus was intentional about his connections. You can't be so consumed with life, so consumed with what's going on that you can't reach out to someone else. That you don't take the opportunity to say, you know what, let me pray for you. Don't take that, you take the opportunity to say, ah, you know what, how can I help? Sometimes we can be so consumed with life that we forget about others. And the church says, sometimes we can be so consumed with things that we forget what we're supposed to be doing in the first place. Write this down. Every conversation matters. Jesus didn't play it safe and he didn't hang out. He didn't kick it where it was safe. Come on. If we want to reach the unchurched, the unchurched aren't going to be in church. I know, I know some, some folk are going to crucify me for this message, but I just got to keep it real. I'm just reading the text as the text says it. Jesus was kicking it with the sinners. And the sinners were okay with Jesus kicking it because they were probably shocked that Jesus, a religious man, was willing to kick it with them. Oh, boy. I hear some of y'all religious folk, your brain's clicking right now. Is Pastor, you telling me to hang out with sinners? But the Bible says, do not be equal, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Context. Unequally yoked. Yoked means relationship. Yoked means uh, you guys are like, that's... That. But in order to get someone saved, they had to have been a sinner. Which means in order for you to get a sinner saved, you have to have some type of connection. One connection. Anybody ever gone to a news cafe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. News cafe has a bar. News cafe has a bar. Here we go. Is there anything written in our bylaws on how I can get dismissed as pastor based off of what I said? What harm is it to take your grape tizer and to go sit at the bar and minister to someone. Oftentimes, we choose not to do it because we're concerned if someone from church sees me at the bar, they're gonna say something about me. But here Jesus is sitting in the room full of sinners and the Sadducees and Pharisees and the scribes are outside judging him, but he's making life change. Uh, so I don't care about your judgment. Keep your judgment because Tupac said only God can judge me. I agree with that statement that only God can judge me. So hold your judgment while I go do the work of the kingdom. So you can keep your judgment because your judgment does nothing for the kingdom. It just some, does something for your ego. Hold your judgment while I go make some damage for the kingdom. As a believer, we've got to go make damage for the kingdom. If we're not making damage for the kingdom, then what are we doing? Oh, I can see some of y'all now looking at you, the way you're looking at me right now. Pastor, I don't agree. Well, read the Bible. Where was Jesus? He was in that church. Why? Because wherever he goes, he can create church. Well, Pastor, I might get corrupted. Well, if you get corrupted, then that means you're not growing like you're supposed to. Just located you. If you can't go talk to a sinner, you just been located. Why? Because you still got some of them old habits. Uh-oh. One, just one connection. He connected with Matthew. Matthew made some connections for Jesus. 
If you read it in, in, in the book of Mark, the same story, you'll find out that he kicked it with the sinners and after they had to kick it, they all followed him. One connection. Who's that one person that you know that you might need to reach out to? One connection. Number two, one routine change. You might need to shake some things up to reach others. One routine change. Get this. Jesus was on his way out of the town. Jesus was exiting the town. It's sometimes your exit can become God's entrance. As he was leaving the town, he saw Matthew. And that became the entrance for Matthew to accept and to receive grace, to receive salvation. Sometimes an exit can become an entrance. I don't know how many times I've ever left a mall or I've, I've left a restaurant or I've left a place and as I was exiting, I ran into someone. And the amazing thing when I run into people <laughs> that haven't been to church in a while, their first thing is, I'm coming back, I'm, I'll be at church. I didn't even say nothing to you. I mean, I didn't even. <laughs> but sometimes your very presence can cause a person to, I need to make a change. As your exit, it can become someone's entrance. Just by the life that you begin to live. It's just God's entry point. One routine change. You know, I always go to this gas station, this petrol station, but let me switch up and go to another. I always go to this, this store, this market, this bar, this, this OK Foods, this pick and pay. Let me go to a different one. Just one routine change could put me in a destiny track to shift someone else's future. Think about that. Jesus was on his way out of the town and ran into Matthew and said, Matthew, follow me. I can only imagine what the conversation was after follow me and going to the party. I can only imagine the text messages that were going out. Matthew was sending, hey, hey I'm throwing a party at my house. You know, you know I know how to throw parties. And, and, hey, Jesus, could you come to this party as my guest? It wasn't like he sent out, you know, a club flyer and had Jesus on the flyer. <laughs> oh, guys, don't play me. You know them club flyers. <laughs> you know when they have them parties and they have certain people who are hosting the parties who was trying to get more people to come and they got free bottle service and they got... Y'all try to play me like you don't see that stuff. I didn't say that you go to it, but maybe you see it. It wasn't like Matthew took Jesus' profile pic and put it on the thing. Hey, at this party today, it's Jesus. Just, just, just run one routine change. Jesus could have been like, you know what? I'm trying to leave this town. I don't have time to stop. I don't have time to talk to Matthew. I see him there, he probably needs me, but I don't have time because I'm leaving. No, he stopped, took the time to change someone's life, change that person's life, got invited to the party and says, you know what, I'm gonna make time and come to the party. And the people who have heard of Jesus probably were shocked when Jesus walked through the doors. Is it Jesus? Why Matthew tell us to come and he didn't tell us Jesus was gonna be here? You know, messed up my buzz. That's Jesus. And Jesus, is like, what up, what's up? What's up, family? Throw me one of them grape ties right quick. One one routine change. Next one. One real conversation. One real conversation. Jesus 
was having conversations with everybody. He, he was just sitting back, just having conversations, a real conversation. Hey, how, how's, how's things going? Oh, it's a little rough. You need salvation? You need, you need to be saved from something? You do know I'm a savior. But he was just having conversations, conversations. Because real conversations leads to real transformation. You, you don't pitch Jesus. It's not like you're throwing out a pitch, uh, 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 like Shark Tank or whatever it is, throwing out a pitch. It's not a pitch. You don't pitch Jesus. You just live the Jesus life, and the Jesus life speaks for itself. It doesn't require me to pitch. It just requires me to start the conversation. Can I, can I, can I mess up your re religious thinking real quick? Pastor John, can I do, can I just mess up? Think about this, y'all. Think about this. All Jesus had to do was start asking questions. Hey, what do you do? How does that, how, how do you do that? Oh, where's your business located? Oh, okay. Just, just having a conversation. Have you ever heard of me? What'd you hear? And then they'll start saying, I'm gonna give you a good example. Uh, so what you, Jesus, what you, how you, how you feel about homosexuality? Because you know I'm a homosexual. See, when you ask questions, you got to always respond to the question behind the question. See, a lot of times we want to defend and argue the Bible. We want to defend and argue our point. We want to defend and argue on the behalf of Jesus. Jesus doesn't need you to argue for him. He just needs you to present the gospel, which means you got to know the question behind the question. So if someone ever asks you, okay, well, uh, uh, you know, you invited me to church, but you know I'm gay. So uh, what's your church believe about gay folk? There's a question behind the question. Here's the question they're really asking. Am I accepted in your community? Do you look down upon me? That's really what they're asking. They're not asking, how do you believe, what do you church believe about homosexuality? What they're really asking is, am I accepted in your community and do you look down upon me? Well, pastor, how do I respond to that? Are they accepted in the community? Yes, you are accepted in the community. Why? Because you are you. Now, Jesus begins to change the actions of you. Put your rocks down, man. Don't be throwing stuff at me. You are you. I'm not asking you to, to just, I'm asking you to come. The physical body of who you are, come. See, you got to make sure that you're not trying to answer the question to begin the argument. There's a question behind the question. They're asking, will you accept me? I will accept you. I might not agree with your lifestyle choices. But I accept you. Why? Because I used to drink. I used to smoke. I used to, I used to know how to smoke Daha really good. <laughs> and guess what? I still can drink. And I can still smoke Daha really good. But because I've come in contact with Jesus and surrendered my life, I choose not to. But Jesus took me as I am, in my flaws, and over time, transformation took place. A butterfly doesn't become a butterfly instantly, they start off as a caterpillar. And then they go into a cocoon state, and then they have this metamorphosis as a beautiful butterfly. But you don't start off beautiful, you start off ugly. And, oh, and it's in your ugliness that Jesus says yes. And it's in your ugliness that Jesus begins to transform you into something beautiful. The key is, is can you come to Jesus in your ugliness and allow him to change you? Well, how is he going to change me? Just surrender your life and you'll see. So there's always a question behind the question. 
Did that, did that help you? Oh, well, do you allow people who drink to come to your church? Basically, are you going to judge me because I'm a drunkard? Are you going to throw shade on me because I... No, you. I want you. I just want you. God just wants you. One real conversation. Last one. Last one. One party. One party. <laughs> you know what I mean when I say one party. Not political party. Okay, someone just gave me a sign. I was like, let me correct that before. And I'm not saying that there's something wrong with, I'm just, okay. One party party, like. You give me, are we together? <laughs> One party. Matthew threw one party and he did not edit the guest list. He didn't say, well, let me edit this guest list because, you know, this Jesus is coming and so I don't want, you know, certain people to be here. No, whoever. Don't edit the guest list. Don't sit there and think, ah, he's too bad to come to church. No, he is too good to come to church. That's a good one. Don't edit the guest list. Whoever you're going to invite, get the worst of the worst, whatever. Just bring them. Share Christ. Don't edit the guest list. Jesus embraced their environment. He didn't come in and say, put up all the alcohol, stop the smoking, stop doing this, stop doing that. He just came in and embraced the environment and became who he was around them, and they decided to follow him. Why? Because he didn't come in with the judgment he didn't come in with the shade. He didn't come in with, I'm doing this and that. He just came in. He just was himself. And himself transformed who the people were. Everyone knew who Jesus was, but everyone was shocked that Jesus was willing to hang out with them. Don't try to change them. As believers, sometimes that's what we do too. When we try to change people. Don't try to change them. Just give them the word and allow the word to change them. You with me? Just one party. He threw one party. Jesus came and their guards fell down. Their guards about what they thought about Jesus, what they thought about religion, what they thought about this and that, it fell and they were able to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Why? Because Jesus is just concerned for them so here's my challenge maybe you can throw a party this week invite all your friends and guess what you can send me an invitation too I'll make some time and come if the food is free I'll be there I'll be in hey trap music oh man trapping Jesus okay and they're like, wait a minute, that's your pastor? We went, we went to go visit someone in, in the hospital this week, and, they, and we said, well, you know, we're, we're pastors. And they looked at us like, uh, I had on ripped rip jeans, this shirt. I was like, yeah, I'm here, I'm here to pray. I could pull out my Bible if you want to. I remember one time I went to the hospital, and they found out I was a pastor, and I was praying with one person. They took me around every single room. Can you pray? Guards fall down when you're just you. Not just coming in with your judgment, trying to not coming in with the Bible beating and all of that. You're just showing up. This is just me. Just take me as I am. Maybe you can throw a party this week. All the people you want to invite, you can throw a party. Bring me over there. I can come just hang out with y'all. But this is your pastor. He's cool. He didn't judge me. No but I know somebody that can help you be even better than you are now. I know somebody that can get you a little bit more. The thing you're searching for, I know somebody that can help you find it. The thing you've been looking for, I know somebody that can turn that rock over to bring you to it. The thing you've been struggling with, I know some got somebody that can end the struggle. The struggle will no longer be real. I know somebody. I know somebody. Here we go. Nobodies become somebodies 
when Jesus gets an invite. Nobodies become somebodies when Jesus gets an invite. Every person that was in that party, I guarantee you no priest, no chief priest knew their name. They're sinners, they're tax collectors. We don't know them. We don't care about them. But the moment Jesus walked into that room, every single nobody became a somebody because Jesus made time to get to know them. Jesus made time to get to reach them. Nobodies become somebodies when Jesus gets an invite. So maybe it's one message. Hey, will you come to church with me? Maybe it's one phone call. Hey, will you come to church with me? Maybe it's one SMS, one WhatsApp, one profile pic change, one, 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 one Instagram pic change, one Instagram pic post. One post could change someone's life. Maybe you've never posted about church before, and that one post intrigues someone, and they're willing to come. That one, one, one profile, that one invite could change someone's life. That one big ask could be the difference that lasts forever. One. One opportunity. One shot. One routine change. One connection. One party. One thing. Can you do one thing this week? Maybe two things, three things. It's the difference between someone coming to church, someone experiencing more, and someone sitting back at home. One. 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 Come on, let's stand. Let's worship. decision away from life change today I want to give you an opportunity maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior maybe you're not born again and today you realize you know what I can serve God I realize he's not a judgmental God he's a compassionate God and maybe you can make one decision today to say you know what I want to serve God that maybe you are saved, but you've abandoned God in your ways. You've abandoned God in your thinking. You've backslid. You, you're doing your own thing. And today you realize, you know what? I need to get back in right standing with my Lord and Savior. That can be one decision that you make today. Jesus is not concerned with the actions. He's concerned with your soul. Through touching your soul, he can get rid of the actions. So if you want to get saved today, maybe you want to rededicate your life, recommit your life to Christ today. You want to make a decision today. I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, I want you just to raise your hand up. That says, Pastor, I want to be saved. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. Pastor, I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to make that one decision today. Here we go. One, lasting difference. Two, with Jesus. Three, 
remarkable life. Go ahead, shoot your hand up boldly. Just put your hand up. Pastor, I want to be saved. I see that hand. I see that hand. Pastor, I want to rededicate, recommit my life to you. Amen. All right, you can put your hands down. Put your hands down. Amen. Hey, we believe in that. That's why we're celebrating that decision you just made. Now we want you to take one more bold step. One more bold step. I want you to grab your Bible, your purse. And maybe you didn't raise your hand, but as we're celebrating and cheering for you, I want you to grab your Bible, your purse, whatever it is that you came in with. This is a bold step. But I want you just to step out in that aisle and walk up to the front. If you raised your hand or you didn't raise your hand, come on up. Church, let's celebrate. Let's cheer for them as they come up. One bold step. Grab your Bible. Grab your purse. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Grab your Bible. Grab your purse. Come on up. They're coming. 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 Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, cheer for them, celebrate them, celebrate them, celebrate them. One decision, one decision, come on, keep clapping, they're still coming, they're still coming, they're still coming. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, y'all, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about, making that one decision for Christ. Amen. Hey, do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor to the left, to the right. Ask them, are you sure? I, we can walk up there together. We can make a decision together. Amen. If they say yes, just walk them up here. Sometimes it can be just that one extra minute in an invitation that can be the change, can be the difference maker. Anybody else say, hey, look, Pastor, I'm ready to take that step. Amen. All right. No worries, no worries, no worries. But you all that came up to the front, I want you just to lift one hand up because that's where your help comes from, from above. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I want you to say this prayer out loud. Say it like you mean it. Say it with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Okay, repeat after me. Church, stretch your hands forward to these that came up. Repeat after me. Father God, I repent of my sins. Jesus, come into my life. Make me new. I surrender my life to you. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you that all things are new. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. If you walk towards Edison, he's going to take you to the prayer room. Walk towards him. He'll take you to the prayer room. Ready? Set. Go. Amen. Were you blessed today? Hey, if you're going to throw a party and you want to invite me, just send me a message. I'll make some time to come to the party. Make sure you got some good food there, you know. We'll have a great time. We'll hang out and fellowship with, with, your, with your friends. Not a problem. Don't edit the guest list for me. Don't edit it for me. I just want to come and just want to be with people. Amen. I believe that's how Jesus would be as well. So I'm telling you, if you want to throw a party this week and you're going to invite these people to church, Throw the party, I'll show up and just hang out. Just hit me up. I'll make the time, you know, and we'll, we'll just go hang out and just kick it. And just Don't edit the guest list. Bring them. Well, Pastor, aren't you going to be afraid if someone photographs you? I don't care what they're going to say. Even if I do something good, they got something to say. If I do something bad, they got something to say. They always, you have to see, they're always going to have something to say. So if you're going to throw a party... Invite me. I'll come. I'll come to the party. I'll come to the party. I'll come to the party. He'll come to the party. Hit me a little, little trap music. I'll come to the party. I'll come to the party. Amen. Hey, so we've got...
um, on the back walls, uh, we're putting up these posters that say, I want more, I'm expecting more, and, and it's got blank, blank lines on there. You can write on these posters, what are you expecting for the series? What do you want to see uh, coming from this series in your own life? And then we also have posters that say, I want more, I'm expecting more. Take a picture with that poster, post it on your social media as well. Uh, you can sign up to register uh, to help volunteer for the, for the Black Panther outreach that we're doing on Saturday. Are you bringing somebody with you? We got, we're going to bring in more chairs. Bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. It's more. We want more. Come on, hit it. Come on. I had a little chant. I want more. I want more. This song. I want more. Ooh, I want more. I want more. I'm coming to more. I'm coming to more. I'm getting 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 more. Stop. Stop. Ooh. Aye. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So you already know if I'm coming to the party, it's going to be lit. I'm going to be up in the A.